Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and this week we have a fantastic topic for you. Glacier National Park. Hello blog, and welcome to Glacier National Park. Glacier is one of our all-time favorite national parks. If I was making a top 10 list, I'm confident it would be on it. Why do you go to Glacier? You go for spectacular mountain scenery, you go for wildlife, you go for that crisp, mountain air and it's definitely a destination park uh, it's located in northern montana right on the border with the great white north those pesky canadians in this video we're going to talk about what's new at glacier national park for this year because there have been a lot of changes in visiting this park last year was the first year that they implemented a vehicle registration requirement to drive going to the sun road and they have decided to continue that this year and of course it's because of the increased number of visitors due to the lovely pandemic so i guess it's just their way of trying to keep the crowds at bay and sort of be able to contain the masses because going to the sun road is the only road that cuts through the park so it's one way through the park one way back through the park there's no sort of like other loop that you can drive or anything like that so it is the destination that everybody wants to visit yeah if you've never been to glacier before you should know there's basically an east entrance and a west entrance. Mm -hmm. And the star attraction is going to the Sun Road in many ways because you're going to be taking that road. It's one of the most beautiful drives that you can take in North America. And of course, there are many stops along the way on going to the Sun Road where you can embark on various hikes or view the mountains and so forth. So since we've got a lot to cover, we're going to do this video kind of podcast style and walk through all of these changes that are new for this year. We're a long way from the beach. First and foremost, if you've never been to Glacier, you aren't familiar with going to the Sun Road, you can watch our video that we filmed many years ago that takes you on that drive so you might have a little bit more knowledge on what to expect. But the most important thing to remember about going to the Sun Road is there is a length limit for vehicles that drive it. So if your vehicle is longer than 21 feet, you cannot drive going to the Sun Road. Seymour is 20 feet long. So some of you guys with like extended cabs and extended beds, you may be too long to drive going to the Sun Road. Measure before you leave the house because... Size matters. Size matters. You cannot be wider than eight feet and you cannot be taller than 10 feet because there are portions of the road where the rock face sort of like hangs over the road. And if you're taller than 10 feet, you would scrape the rock face. So make sure that you are within those parameters before you even bother booking your ticket to drive the road. Tickets are $2, so they're not trying to make money off of you. It's basically the fee for using recreation.gov, which is the website that they use for reserving the site. For people that aren't internet savvy, you can call the 1-800 number at the park and get your ticket that way, but I really don't recommend doing that. That's really for just people that are completely computer illiterate. So the best way to do it is going to recreation.gov, and you just need one ticket per vehicle so you know if you have friends that you're visiting with I highly suggest that you carpool and smash as many people into your car as you can because I'm not sure if smash is the perfect term <laughs> well, for this know, road if your vehicle seats eight people then I suggest you fill it up and by the way this road is a lot of fun to drive there are certain sections in the road where you're going to be a little bit nervous probably if it's mm -hmm. your first time driving it because there are areas where there's a very sheer drop off on one side but i don't find the road to be frightening i find it to be inspiring because it's such a beautiful drive well there are a lot of people that are really terrified of riding this road especially when you're on the side that is closest to the drop off because it is i mean it's a long way down you got to trust your driver yeah. on this road. You really have to trust your driver and the driver really has to pay attention. If you can't do that, then I suggest taking one of the tours. They have red bus tours that you can book and take through the park so that way you could just sit back and relax and take in the scenery and not have to worry about driving. 
So that is an option for people, and I believe those will be running this year, but they haven't set up their schedule yet for those, and so they're not accepting reservations yet. So don't plan on that because it's not 100% yet. And with the pandemic, you just never know what they're going to decide. So with the registration, like I said, you just need one of those tickets per vehicle. So as long as one person in your group takes charge and gets your little vehicle passed, you'll be fine. They do require the ticket for the period between May 27th and September 11th. So that is the window of time where you will be required to have that registration ticket to drive going to the Sun Road. We have driven going to the Sun Road in the warm-ish summer months. Mm -hmm. We've also been the last vehicle on the road basically at the very end of the season. Mm -hmm. Early in the season, that road can have a lot of snow and ice on it, and sometimes they open later. Yeah, so. sometimes the road doesn't even open until mid to late June, depending on the snowfall. So if you are one of those people going on May 27th, just know that you may not be able to drive the complete road because they may not have all of it cleared of snow just yet. So I really encourage you to check the weather conditions on the Glacier National Park website. They do update those regularly and they'll let you know like when the road is completely clear to drive the entire thing. But it doesn't matter. Starting May 27th, 27th, you have to have the ticket to get in regardless if the road is open all the way through or not. And if you use Facebook, they do have a pretty good Facebook page for Glacier National Park mm -hmm. that will provide updates with regards to going to the Sun Road and the weather conditions and so forth. You can start making the reservations on March the 2nd at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can make them up to 120 days in advance. If you're going to go early in the season, I highly suggest you put March 2nd on your calendar and you get in there and reserve your ticket ASAP. But starting May 26, which is the day before the ticket requirements start, they will start allowing additional reservations to be made the day before you visit. So I think they're going to release a few tickets like previous days going throughout the summer, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> but I wouldn't count on getting one of those tickets because I think there will be very few. But for you last minute visitors, there is that hope. They are also requiring a vehicle registration ticket for the North Fork area of the park, which is kind of this little sliver off to the far, like northwest of the park. We actually have never been to that part of the park. It's kind of remote, but there are some campgrounds there and there are some things to see there. So you're going to the Sun Ticket is one ticket. And then if you want to go to the North Fork area, that's a separate ticket. So we'll talk more about that in a bit. But first and foremost, let's talk about campgrounds because I think that's what most people want to know. So in Glacier National Park, there are 13 total campgrounds, but only seven of those campgrounds actually offer RV camping. And so, several of those campgrounds that allow RV camping have very short length limits, like 25 feet or less. There are a few privately owned campgrounds outside of the park. Previously, yeah. we have typically stayed at one that's just located right outside the west entrance of the park. There are a couple in that area. There are also some in the Kalispell area area. The town of Kalispell is located... It's about 45 minutes. Yeah, about a 45-minute drive from the west entrance, and you can find pretty much everything in Kalispell, every mm -hmm. kind of store or services that you might need. Yeah, but I would say right outside that west entrance into the park, which is the busiest entrance into the park, there are at least a half a dozen privately owned RV parks that are fairly large, so don't fret if you can't get into the national park because there are options outside the park. This this year, the following campgrounds will require reservations. Fish Creek, St. Mary, Apgar, and Sprague Creek all will require reservations. And you can reserve them on recreation.gov on a six-month rolling basis, so six months in advance. Rising Sun Campground and Avalanche Campground will remain first come, first serve. But both of these campgrounds have a 25-foot max length limit, so... For the majority of us, we will not fit there if you're in an RV, unless you're in a small RV or in a camper van. Previously, the Manning Glacier Campground required reservations, but they haven't given any information about that campground for this year. I'm assuming it will stay a reservations required campground, but I don't want to say because I don't know for sure because they haven't confirmed that. And then previously, the Two Medicine Campground, which is 
far south in the park and actually has its own little entrance. It was first come first serve in the past, but they haven't mentioned anything about it this year. So I don't know. So to sum it up, camping for RVs, especially larger RVs within the park is kind of limited, kind of tight. And if you really want to do that inside the park, you better get on and book your reservation early. Yes. I think. <laughs> you have to be a planner if you want to stay within this park. In an absolute worst case scenario, you can overnight park at the Kalispell Walmart, or at least you could in previous years. And we have seen a lot of <laughs> RVs there before. A of lot course. of people abuse the privilege at this particular Walmart, so I won't be shocked if they do decide to take it away. Yeah, if you do end up overnight parking there, please, please, please be a good citizen and do it the right way. Yeah. Don't abuse it. Don't live there. <laughs> Because we've seen people that do. Hey, good, how are you? I'm going to break this down into like two different areas. There's the going to the Sun Road area. That area requires its own vehicle registration ticket that you can get on recreational.gov, like I said. Your ticket is required between the hours of 6 a.m. and 4 p.m., May 27th through September 11th. So if you are willing to get up and be there before 6 a.m., you can get in without a ticket. We probably won't be doing that. If you want to wait and go after 4 p.m., you could go without a ticket. Now, if you want to go hike, I don't recommend you do that. If you just want to drive the road, sure. In truth, the early morning hours provide some of the best photographic opportunities. You know, there are a lot of photographers who don't want to take photographs after 8 a.m. Uh, until around the golden hour and sunset. So this is a little confusing, but it's new this year. So if you decide to come in from the east entrance, which is the St. Mary entrance, you aren't required to have a vehicle registration ticket to get in that entrance. However, once you get to the rising sun portion of the road, which is about five miles west of that St. Mary entrance, they will have a checkpoint there where they will be checking for the going to the sun road vehicle registration ticket. Checkpoint checking. So basically, they're going to allow people to come in that St. Mary entrance so that they can get to the attractions and things to see that are right inside that entrance without a ticket. But once you get five miles in, they're going to require the ticket there. It's a little confusing. <laughs> So the Going to the Sun vehicle registration tickets this year will only be good for three days. So when you reserve a ticket, it's good for three days. You have that same ticket that you're going to show every day for three days. Last year, it was good for seven days. So if you went last year, don't expect your ticket to be good for the same amount of time this year because this year your ticket is only good for three days. So that's a big change to me. It says to me that they must have been totally slammed last year. I think they totally were. <laughs> and obviously yeah. they're trying to limit traffic on going to the Sun Road. Yep. Something to note is that if you have a reservation for lodging, camping, transportation like a tour, or a commercial activity within the Going to the Sun Road corridor, you can use your reservation for that activity or that campsite or hotel room to get entry into the park in lieu of the special vehicle registration. So if you have a campground reservation to stay in the park, you don't have to make a separate vehicle registration to get in. That makes total sense. Yes, but it's only good for those days of your reservations. So if you're booking a bus tour or something like that, you don't have to have a separate ticket as well. The free fare shuttle will operate this year from the Apgar Visitor Center to the St. Mary Visitor Center. Fair, F-A-R-E, not F-A-I-R. Yes. Like, so the free We're not talking shuttle, about the county basically. fair. <laughs> so it's a free shuttle. Yes. And this year, unlike last year, it will not require a reservation and it will be first come, first serve. So you don't have to go online and make a reservation to take the free shuttle anymore. You can just hop on and hop off this year. Which I think is really good news because it means one less thing you have to go on and reserve and plan. And, you know, there are a lot of people who maybe want to opt out of driving going to the Sun right. Road. And they just want to take the free shuttle, relax, yep. and let somebody else worry about the driving. Right. 
So that's a good option if you feel slightly nervous driving that road. And it's a good option if you're staying at a campground within the park and you don't want to get in the mess of the driving. Something to note that they have put on their website is that this year the park is going to be doing utility work that might require nighttime closures on the west side of going to the Sun Road. So they say that anybody who is visiting between June and September should anticipate nightly closures from Apgar to Lake McDonald. Basically, you need to pay attention to the closing times in the park because you could be at the Logan Pass Visitor Center wanting to leave out the west entrance and if you're there after dark the road could be closed wow so that would mean you have to go out the saint mary entrance and drive all the way back around to west glacier which could be like an hour and a half yeah probably hour, a two hour drive i mean so you're really going to have to pay attention to the road conditions and construction when you go this year yeah that's something that <laughs> i want to re-emphasize it's critical to understand you got one road basically yeah. in this entire gigantic park there is the one little north fork off in the far corner but that's like the remote section of the park. The main part of the park is that going to the Sun Road corridor. And it's very critical that that road be open for you to get out either side of it. For example, if the east entrance of the park happened to be closed and you wanted to go up and visit the Manny Glacier area where there are a lot of grizzly bears, mm -hmm. you would have to drive all the way down south outside the park and then wrap around to the east and go north. The point being, it, it turns what would have been a 30 or 45 minute drive into a good two hour <laughs> or more. Yeah. But it's worth it for those grizzly bears. It is worth it for the grizzly bears. So the important thing I'm saying is pay attention to the road closures when you go because you don't want to get stuck and having to do like some hour and a half or two hour detour because there's there's only one way. The North Fork area of the park. So this is the more remote area of the park that is requiring its own vehicle registration ticket. So if you want to go that way, the entrance station there is called Pole Bridge and they require the registration ticket that you can reserve on recreation.gov again. It is required from May 27th to the September 11th, same as the other, but it's required from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's a little longer window of time where a ticket is required there. And those tickets are only good for one day. So you've got the one day you reserve it for and that's it. The campsites that can be accessed by this entrance are first come first serve only. So honestly, they're probably not any RV sites they're mainly tent campers or people that are in camper vans. But those sites are assigned at that entrance station. So you have to tell them at the entrance station that you're going to the campground because that's where they're going to tell you your campsite. So that's a little weird, but that's how they're doing it. Portions of the park that do not require vehicle registration. So things that you can get to without having to do this vehicle registration include Manny Glacier, Two Medicine, which is far south, separate entrance of the park, Cut Bank, and the Chief Mountain Highway. Park rangers will be temporarily restricting access to the really busy areas, which are Two Medicine and Manny Glacier. You could go to those areas. They don't require a ticket, but they might be too busy and they've cut off access for a while. The peak time to visit Two Medicine and Manny Glacier are 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if you go during those hours, those are the times when you are you might get turned away because it's too busy. So avoid those areas during that time because that's when they're really going to be packed. Go later in the afternoon or earlier in the morning. By the way, I highly recommend that you do visit the Manny Glacier area. Yeah. As I mentioned, there are a lot of grizzly bears up in that area, but also the Manny Glacier Hotel is definitely worth a visit. It's just a very charming hotel. Tell yeah. that kind of reminds me of Old Faithful Inn in a way. It's got it's really beautiful. It's got a really nice character. dining facility. We've eaten there many times. You have a view of the lake. And there are horseback rides in yes. that area as well. And that's something to note. If you are going to either of those areas with any sort of reservation, like a boat tour, a hotel reservation, horseback rides, or guided hikes, you'll be permitted entry no matter what. So even if they've started restricting entry because it's too busy, all you've got to do is show them your reservation for your horseback ride or your guided hike, and they'll let you in. Don't panic if you have a reservation and you get there and they're turning people away. You just show them your reservation, so make sure before you get there you've downloaded your reservation onto your phone that you can show them before you get there because you probably won't have decent cell service to pull it up on your phone. 
There is a hiker shuttle that leaves from Manny Glacier that's a pay shuttle, but they haven't given any details on that for this year, so I don't know if they're going to be running that this year or not. So if you're interested in that particular shuttle, you just need to keep checking back with the Park Service because they haven't told what they're doing about that for this year. And then again, the Red Bus Tours, which are the, the tours where you sit back and sit in the kind of historic Red Bus, and they have a tour guide that tells you what you're seeing and everything. Those have not been finalized for 2022. So we don't know if they're going to be doing them this year, if they are, what the process is going to be for booking those. So again, you're just going to have to keep checking back with the National Park Service. On that note, we are going to put a link beneath this video to some information, uh, specifically a press release that the Park Service put out uh, that discusses some of these changes in more detail. And if there are any updates uh, that we're made aware of, we will link them beneath the video as well. Yeah, and the important thing to know, when you go to the Glacier National Park website right now, it doesn't have a lot of accurate information. So this press release is actually really important because it has a lot of the most up-to-date info because it just came out last week and they haven't gotten around to updating the website just yet. So there is a lot of inaccurate accurate information regarding campground reservations and that sort of thing on the website right now. So it's really confusing if you are going to look at their website because the press release is very different from the current information on the website. So since the website may not have the latest and greatest information, you'll also want to download the NPS app onto your phone. This is an app dedicated to all of our national parks where you can find information. And I have a feeling the app might get updated before the website. That happens sometimes these days. Honestly, I also think the most accurate place where you can get the easiest up-to-date information is through the social media platforms that Glacier National Park has. Most of the large national parks have their own Instagram page, their own Facebook page, their own Twitter account. So I would check probably Instagram first and see what sort of announcements they've made there recently. I think that's a, an easy one to check. And you can usually comment to them there and get an answer easier than you can sometimes calling or looking on the phone. If you've never been to Glacier National Park and you're planning a trip this year, you should absolutely be very excited. Yeah. You'll have very special, magical experiences in Glacier, not only driving, going to the Sun Road, but getting out on a hiking trail. Take some short hikes or take some long hikes if you want, because it is really one of the crown jewels of the National Park system. Yeah, I will say if you're somebody that's scared of heights, you might want to ask the rangers about the hikes that you're looking at, because they're there are a few hikes that are kind of on the edge of like a mountain side. And so if you have a fear of heights, they would not be the hikes for you. <laughs> We personally see more grizzly bears up in the Glacier area than we do in Yellowstone and the Tetons. Yeah. We've also probably seen more black bears in that area. I want to dedicate this video to Long Long Honeymoon viewer Stuart, who thought last week's video was so terrible that I should just stop making videos altogether, walk away. Or he, he said, <laughs> take a break <laughs> he said, and then come back. He said, you should quit. It's a funny thing about creating videos and creating content, what one person will love, another person will hate. If you don't like today's pizza, you might like the hamburgers we're serving tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, as always, for tuning in. This has been yet another episode of Long, Long Honeymoon, the long, longest-running RV-themed travel show on the interwebs. You know, this being a honeymoon blog, many of you have requested additional footage of our actual wedding ceremony. And so now, without further ado, I present Christy and I getting hitched.
Uh, gets me every time. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. If you're interested in our national parks, we will be producing some more national park videos focused on various changes in the most popular parks. So stay tuned for that. Yes. And as always, what do we say? Lolo. Lolo, ho, guys. You know, they used to have signs in glaciers saying that all the glaciers would be gone by the year 2020. Womp womp. They're not gone yet. <laughs> Thankfully, there are still glaciers in Glacier National Park, so get there and enjoy them. Times like these really remind me of why we go to all the trouble of loading up a camper and driving it 3,000 miles. There's some days that go by and they were just like another day. And so the reason we travel is to shake up our routine, get into an unusual, unfamiliar environment, and have some new experiences. I want to talk today about one of my favorite activities that we've done on this entire trip. Yesterday we went on a hike in Glacier National Park. We took our truck up to Logan Pass, which is like at the very top of the mountain range. This is something that I really encourage everyone to do. Get out of your car, put on a pair of comfortable shoes and just go out and walk for two or three miles because once you get away from the road, things change. Things get quiet. You don't see so many people. You start to see the animals really in their native environment. And sometimes the animals may surprise you. When I first saw him, I thought he wasn't going to walk towards us. And then as he started walking towards us, I was thinking, uh-oh, what do I do? <laughs> and so I just kind of stood there and um, was waiting for him to walk past or something, and he just kept walking directly towards me. He was checking us out. We were checking him out. There was a little bit of a standoff. And then he just decided that we were fine, and he kept on strolling down the path along his way. it was really just a, a fantastic experience on a great day and that's one of the resolutions that we're making on this honeymoon trip is to hike more often that's something I would encourage everyone to do go to a national park hike you'll love it take a hike <laughs>